Welcome everyone who is joining us for the Pi Martins class story. It's getting quite exciting now to find out what's happening with the mystery of the hidden gold on chapter 14, the race to Gull Island. Emily united, I'm sorry, Emily untied the mooring line and they all pushed Gemini out into the water, running alongside and hoping in and hopping in like the start of an Olympic bobsleigh final. Drift jumped in last, his tail wagging like a metronome. There had been a frenzy of activity as the friends had rushed around gathering equipment for the race to Gull Island. Navigation charts, binoculars, bottles of water, emergency biscuit supplies raided from the lighthouse kitchen and the photo of the Kruger Pond, of course. Drift had no idea where they were going or why, but with the sea breeze blowing back his ears and spray in his nostrils, who cared? Scott took the oars and rowed as if he was on a home straight in the Oxford-Cambridge boat race. Although, if he had been, of course, he'd, had, he, he'd have had seven other world-class rowers have, heaving away alongside him, which would have made his job much easier. It would have also have been easier if their opponent hadn't had a huge head start. At least there had been lots of chances for Scott to practice rowing since the, his feeble attempts on the way to the Whistling Caves when they first came to Castle Quay. By now he was a skilled and powerful oarsman. He kept up a good speed, heading due west across the bay. But after 50 minutes his muscles were on fire. He handed the oars to Jack and Swig from the water bottle. How long will it take to get there? he asked Emily. If we keep up this pace and the sea stays calm, It'll be another half an hour or so. Emily lifted the binoculars to her eyes. It looks like Fox has anchored his sailing boat away out from the Gull Island. He must have a tender, a little dinghy or something, and he'll be going ashore. I was hoping he'd dump enough to sail too close, be dumb enough and he'll be dumb enough and run aground on the rocks. He hasn't watched any films, Jack panted between stroke. Doesn't he know baddies are meant to make stupid schoolboy errors? After half an hour of hard rowing, they drew level with the sailing boat. The green dolphin was swaying gently on an anchor. As Emily had expected, the sails were furled and the tender was missing. She looked up at the craggy contours of Gull Island, its sheer cliff stretched with white, like a giant cake drizzled with icing. She te te checked her map of the bay, onto which she'd pencilled old Bob's notes about the best approach to the island. Then she grasped the oars and began to weave her way through the outlying rocks. Suddenly, Drift started barking. There he is, Jack shouted over the barking and the screeching of a thousand gulls. A small inflatable dinghy was bobbing up in the rocks off the southernmost tip of the island. Emily shaded her eyes from the glare of the brilliant sunlight bouncing off the water and the white rocks. The man on the boat, boat the man on board was definitely Simon Fox. Emily could make out his blonde hair and faded blue shirt. He was caught up in a kind of mini whirlpool inside a ring of rocks as if he was in a spin cycle of a washing machine. His little boat had an outboard motor but it must have broken down because he was wielding a paddle and for the way he was behaving, not so much rowing as swatting at the water. He was clearly no oarsman. He was in trouble and starting to panic, but that wasn't the only thing that was bothering Emily. Oh no, he's got the gold, she cried. How do you know? Scott shouted. Emily pointed, look how low the dinghy is in the water. He must be carrying a very heavy cargo. What are we going to do? Scott yelled. But before Emily could answer, she heard a shout. Simon Fox was standing up in his boat, making it more unstable than ever, waving his arms and calling out, Help! Over here! He must be kidding, Jack snorted. Why would we help the gold-robbing weasel? Well, we can't just leave him, let him drown, Emily pointed out. Scott took the oars and starting, and starting rowing towards Fox. No but we'll make him agree to give us our gold back before we get him out of here. Careful, Emily cried, 
don't get too close or we'll get sucked into the cauldron too. When they manoeuvred Gemini as close to the Vox as they dared, Emily uncoiled the moor line and threw it to Simon Fox. Hanging on to the side of the lurching dinghy, Fox tried to grab the rope with one hand. He missed and it splashed into the water. Emily gathered it in and tried again. On the fifth attempt, Fox caught the end and tied it to the bow of bow of his boat. Scott, Jack and Emily hauled the little dinghy out of the churning maelstrom. Once in calmer waters, the friends helped Fox to wedge the boat into a crevice in the rocks next to Gemini. Simon Fox puffed out his cheeks and rubbed his hands through his spiky blonde hair, which was liberally splattered with white blobs. His face and neck a brick red with sunburn. Cheers, kids, he shouted, flashing them a friendly grin. I thought I'd just mosey over here and explore this island. Didn't realise the fox was such a death trap. He slapped his forehead. What a dongo, eh? Right, lad, lad, landlubber, I am. Lucky you guys came to my rescue. He'd held up his hand for a high five. No one responded. Fox's smile faltered. Don't give us that rubbish, Scott said. We know what you're up to. You nicked our treasure map and you've dug up our gold. Hand it over. Fox raised his sun bleached eyebrows and laughed. Treasure map? Gold? This is a game of Pirates of the Caribbean? We know you've got it, Jack told him. Suddenly, Simon Fox's jo jovial smile faded and he nodded sadly, as if disappointed with himself. He held his hands up in surrender. OK, it's a fair cop, he sighed. I'll come quietly. So you did steal our map, Scott shouted. No, I've just borrowed it. Look, I'm really sorry, kids. I should have told you. It's just that when I heard you talking about the gold, I didn't think you'd ever have a chance of actually being able to crack the code and find it yourself. I'm a bit of a metal detector buff, so I thought I'd see if I could track it down for you, obviously. I was going to hand it over when I found it. I just thought it would make a great surprise for you all. Emily wasn't sure she believed him. Fox looked her in the eye. Then he tapped his chest with both his hands as if to show her that his heart was in the right place. OK, I were, it was a dozy idea. My bad. I just haven't been thinking straight since my girlfriend left me. And now my dumb scheme has backfired and you all think I'm right, scumbag. Nice work, Fox. Scott and Jack laughed and Emily, even Emily couldn't help being won round by Simon telling himself off. She was also starting to feel a little sorry for him. They'd ruined the surprise he'd planned, and at least he found the gold. She leaned across and peered over the side of the dinghy. But there was nothing there. No wooden chairs with big brass hinges. Not even a scuffy old box. Just a metal detector lying in the ankle-deep water and a gash along the flank of the boat. The entire section of the wall had almost completely deflated. That was why the boat was sitting so low in the water. It was sinking. Emily stared at Fox. You haven't found the gold? Simon shook his head. He pulled the treasure map out of his pocket and shook it. This map is a hoax. It's all wrong. Wrong? Scott asked. What do you mean? It's not even the shape of this wretched island. I should have known. I've been crawling around on the rocks for hours getting cooked in the sun and ripping my jeans to shreds while those damn birds used me as target practice. There's meant to be a little crescent-shaped bay on the south coast. It's not there. Nothing lines up with this map. It's a load of old codswallop. Emily stared at him. This couldn't be right. After all their work, they'd, beaten, uh, they'd been beaten to the gold and then it turned out the gold wasn't even there. She, she sank her head onto her knees and ball drift close to hide the tears that were prickling her eyes. And this dinghy's a goner now, Simon Fox went on. So can I bum a lift with you fellas going back to the Green Dolphin? Sure, Scott said in a flat voice. Fox climbed aboard Gemini and sat down. I think your William Maddox guy was having a laugh. He held out the map as if about to toss it into the waves. In the sunlight, the thick parchment was also transparent as tracing paper. 
the faded ink was much clearer than it had been in the light of the oil lamp on the dark, stormy afternoon. Suddenly, Emily saw something that made her heart miss a beat. One tiny dot she hadn't noticed before. One tiny dot that made a huge difference. She lunged for the map, snatched it from Fox's hand and held it up to light again. Look! She waved the map at Scott and Jack. There's a full stop after Gull. It's an abbreviation. It's not Gull Island at all. The gold's hidden on Gulliver's Island. And join us next time for chapter 15, A Pirate's Charter. Take care.